This is a final review of the recently finished airing Chinese web drama Qi Hun, Hikaru no Go. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where junkie and good storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. When you see a second review of the same drama coming from me, it usually means I really like it. If you haven't seen my first impression video, well, you can check it out here. So first, I have decided to rate this drama finally as a two goat mind drama. I'm treating this reading with a little bit extra generosity because this is the best animation slash manga adapted drama I've seen from Chinese drama land. Nothing really performed close to the level of success and quality of this drama. So it's kind of the only one within its category of drama making. Therefore, okay, I think it deserves two goat mind. In this video, I want to first talk about the stuff that I highly appreciate about this drama after watching the entire thing. I'm definitely also going to talk about the things I think it could improve on. Also a little bit extra information regarding this production that I've collected during this entire time of it being on air. I think there are two major things this drama has done that made it very different from other type of manga animation adapted drama. The first thing is it's a super successful domesticated version of the Japanese origin story. You have to be super careful about just taking it straight over and not localize it well. That's usually the biggest problem you will have with this type of work. If you think about the um, Shinye Shitang, can't quite remember the English translation. Basically, it's a Japanese IP that was really successful about a small diner owner who runs the shop at midnight and early morning and people coming. And China adapted it, bought the copyright, made its own version, but they're very, very bad at making it a Chinese story. The type of particular diner, the type of particular things that happens and people who visit and the food it cooks literally does not exist in China. So no matter how many stars you invite to the table, nobody believes the story. So it's still a failure drama. So I'm super grateful that Hikaru no Go is so careful at taking a story over, but making it completely logical, fitting into the China setting in its time that's starting at the late 90s in all the different sort of society groups that you will come across from students to teachers to different professional people. Also the production invited professional Chinese Go players and organizations to make sure that each game they have is a proper game that can exist, that follows the Go's rules in China. The levels of different goal players and what type of professional qualification you need to get, what kind of tests you have to go through, what kind of competition. It all fits what actually goes on with professional goal players in China. So it adds a lot of credential to the believability of this story. I cannot say that for most of the Chinese dramas that buys copyright from other countries and do their own version. And that leads me to talk about the second point, which is for this drama, it does not only do it on a superficial level in terms of making everything fitting into the Chinese context, but it did character changes. It rewrites certain things to make it more reasonable in this the realistic setting of the story. And that mostly goes into the creation of the characters. And in my opinion, the success of Hikaru no God to me lies mostly in its very successful ensemble character depiction in the drama. The definite leads, Hu Xianxu playing Shi Guang, the original Hikaru, Zhang Chao playing Chu Yin, the original Sai. Hao Fusheng is like the third lead who plays the original Akira. But it doesn't mean everybody else is just there to fill the table, every character, no matter how majorly supporting or minorly supporting they are, or even just extras showing up for one particular po point, everybody gets an interesting storyline. You can't even say this for some so-called high budget, high quality productions coming from China, whether it's original based on IP. And I think it's even harder when you're adapting it from a manga from animation from a different country. There's a lot of love, attention, care that the creative team gave to all their characters. They also made them more human and more reasonable. For example, in this drama, they created this six years gap when the young Shi Guang and Chu Ying had their first big fight, during which time the kid grows into a close to high schooler age young man. Then through some quite accidental event, Go goes back to his life and he realizes it still is meaningful to him and he is asking for help, calling for 
dream to come back to his life and that's when they get connected again. A lot of people when they first saw this plot as they watch his drama were not happy. It was like, this is different from the manga. In the manga, it didn't happen this way. The kid kind of is a genius and very quickly discovered he has this passion and love for the game Go. But I think the drama's adaptation is very successful in two ways. First, it's being more realistic. Think about you being a kind of average kid who just likes to play toys. Suddenly you are followed by this ghostly figure who just forces you to play this boring game of black and white, right? stones and you don't even know all the history what is behind it you have very little idea and you're very young and suddenly you're facing off the greatest player in the country and then that person is like you have to spend your whole life doing this won't you get scared won't you get like why what the heck is going on i just want to go back to my normal happy child life it's not like i don't have problems already right i have exams you know chinese schools are brutal and you want me to dedicate my life to this thing? Why? It came out of nowhere. Why am I responsible for that? I think it's a very reasonable reaction that a kid has. It's like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. This is stupid. So the first point is, it's actually more reasonable, in my opinion, to have the kid react like that. The second good thing is, because their first encounter happened right from the beginning, so that excitement of encountering this supernatural sort of being and existence is already in the drama and happened. And the drama is clever to actually use that again because those two characters broke off for such a long time that when they finally got together again, everybody's like clapping. So it created a second sort of peak of that relationship between these two main characters. When you introduce the younger version of the actor, the audience's recognition with the character is with the little boy and his relationship with Zhang Chao. Now he grows up into a different actor. And it's a clever way to re-establish that encounter with this new actor now playing the growing up kid, but Zhang Chao is not changing, it's still the same actor. So I think that's a really clever device. It makes sense in both ways. So I actually love this type of adaptation. You can definitely tell they have thought about this carefully. And then, like I said earlier, every character gets their day. The closer one to Shi Guang, such as his close buddy Hong He. <laughs> what a beautiful and lovely character. He has probably the most screen time apart from the major three leads and I love, adore his friendship relationship with Shi Guang. Although the Shi Guang and Yu Liang are definitely set up in the drama as sort of the friend enemy who are each other's catalyst and pushing each other forward in their sort of professional career of Go. And then there's definitely an intentional selling CP thing, particularly towards the end of the drama going on with these two characters. But honestly, I think the most reliable friendship throughout his journey that Shi Guang is lucky to have with a real person, apart from Chu Ying, is with Hong He. What a successful, lovely character. You can also say that for almost everyone, Shen Yilang. Another archetypical type of Go player who is actually very skillful, but he has a lot of psychological barriers and stuff he has to break through and he doesn't get to success easily. His own re romantic relationship, the girlfriend, who would sacrifice so much for him, but realizing she doesn't really have a future in this and has to go back to her normal life. Even like the person who shows up for one plot point, who challenges all the go playing clubs and, you know, paint, I am here and I've won. You can only get that removed <laughs> until you beat me. That character only has very short screen time, but so memorable. Even the go board making factory people are interesting. So this drama doesn't have wasted characters. And it's very clever device that at the end of episode 32, Chu Ying has to disappear. He had this long monologue talking to Shi Guang who has already fallen asleep. And that is a such clever way of basically wrapping up this entire magical journey and calling out most of the important supporting roles that have made a difference and impression to Shi Guang and also to Chu Ying's life. Most importantly to the game goal and what people are willing to do for it and it ties into the dream, the dilemma, the struggle, all that is just so well done. I also have to say the drama definitely have put characters above the actors. In many adaptations they tend to pick really famous people to make a big name leading the drama but you often see the actors bigger than the characters themselves. In the drama you just don't have that. All the characters are picked because they fit and they serve the imagined blueprint from the 
director's mind. For example, Han Mubo, who played Feng Shui. So many people didn't even recognize it's him until they've watched for a while and they realized this is a guy who actually took part in talent competitions, talent selection shows, and he usually presents himself looking very much like an idol. When you look at the drama, totally different style, and so far from the standard imagery of himself, he presents on the internet, people don't even recognize it's him. The actor Sun Tan, who played Shen Yilang, I was super shocked to find out what he looks like right, in real life. That just makes me appreciate this drama so much more is they didn't allow right whatever the actor's normal look or halo or their style interfere with the dramatic creation. Then let's talk about the things that I think it definitely can improve on and the reason why I think I gave it a little bit generous rating for it to be too gold mine. As a 36 episode drama, they have added a lot of original creation plot line into the story. So structure wise, it's still not very ideal, particularly around the 20 or so episodes when the original uh, manga's content is pretty much kind of used. And the pacing of things start to break a little, wobble a little in the mid 20s. The last four episodes have very uneven times, right? The longest episode what runs like an hour and 26 minutes. But in terms of how much focus they've put on particular things during those four wrapping up episodes, not the ideal, I'd say, configuration. Most people watching this drama would agree they really should have given more time to wrap up the particular storyline of Chu Ying and Shi Guang, this unusual human and kind of spiritual pair. In the last four episodes, there's literally just one scene of Shi Guang dreaming. And in the dream, Chu Ying was silent throughout the whole thing, just gave him his fan, passing down the love, the passion, the tradition, and also the faith in this game Go, even in today's world when AI has beaten human for sure. But that's a very short scene, and it's not enough. In my opinion, in this drama version of you building up those two people to this point, so many beautiful moments have happened between those two characters. We need a little bit more. Also because the drama adapted the story in a way that made King Chui not really a dead ghost as it is in the manga, he is more like accidentally got trapped spiritually into this thing because of a weird astrological <laughs> event that happened in the sky at the time. And there's already clues, right? In the drama, when you watch particularly uh, about the temple, when the monk can actually see or hear, Chu Ying, when he definitely is aware of the Nanliang dynasty passed down book of the Go that is related to Chu Ying. Also before episode 32, towards the end, when Chu Ying keeps phasing out, you can see that he can actually transport into his real time and bumping to people. So he's not a spiritual form in the ancient time, which is suggesting when he disappears from the contemporary world, he actually physically reappears in his real timeline. A clue you already buried, it should have been solved at the end of the drama. The easiest and simplest thing I can think of is that book, right? That's recording the uh, ancient go playing from that dynasty that they have in the temple. It could have been, for example, the name of Nameless that's previously there, that's actually Chu Ying's go playing, gets changed into Chu Ying for some reason because he got back and he cleared his name and in his timeline, he changed history. Therefore the book gets changed and Shi Guang goes in and discover that and realized, you know, this person did exist and it actually has changed history and he knows that he's well and he's done well in his time. I think that makes perfect sense. And I almost feel they're setting it up for it from all the clues they've laid for. And for some reason it didn't get done in the end. I even suspect they actually filmed it, but for some reason, the last version didn't have it. I searched and searched and couldn't find confirmation, but I have the strong feeling this is what they intended for, but didn't end up having, and I'm really unhappy about it. To me, the drama's most important thing, no matter how much I scream about you know other CPs, is Chu Ying and Shi Guang, their relationship. Without that, the story would not exist, and I'm not happy <laughs> with the version I get in the end. Also, I think the last couple of episodes spent too much time dealing with Shi Guang's sort of like breakdown and his CP, <laughs> his relationship with Yu Liang, which I appreciate highly, highly. And I like these two. I mean, I have no problem with the actor. I actually adore a lot of the CPs that got wrapped up in the last couple of episodes, but I think they did spend too much 
time and focus on that and not focusing on the game go enough. And they end with the international competition. They go in and it ends, which makes sense. I mean, I'm happy that they do that. They don't actually film the entire competition. But before that, I need a little bit more of focus on the game go. I definitely see why some people really, really are not happy about the last couple of episodes. It does cause, I think, the rating to drop a little bit. And some people even claim, right, the drama had broken tails, which in Chinese just means, you know, good, 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 good. And, pff, you know, the ending just collapses and disaster. I wouldn't really say it's that bad, okay? You have Game of Thrones, right, the last season there in this world. As an example, that is called absolute shit ending. I mean, even like Guardian, whoever the morons are that's responsible for that, when you have those really shitty stuff, this drama is not even close in comparison. But because I think it has built up a lot of expectation and people have hoped for it to be the best manga adapted drama in Chinese dramaland, therefore I think there's more disappointment in that. I wouldn't say it's fair to the production to say that it has failed in the last couple of episodes. I think it's still overall very high quality drama, but the ending definitely can do with more work. Now, that last point, I just want to share with my audience some of the things interesting about this production I've collected over uh, last three, four, five weeks. First, the director is a really funny guy. His name is Liu Chang, which is super common name in Chinese. I know at least four different Liu Chang. And this is the director who have brought us with you, Zui Hao the Woman, with Liu Hao Ren and Tan Songyun. Also, Du Jia Ji Yi, Samurai Only We Know, which also features Zhang Chao, the actor who played Chu Ying. This is a really cool guy. There's a long interview of him talking about this production. He's a big game player, like not really into the anime or manga world, but definitely a huge collector of anything game related. He also is a person has said clearly in that interview that although he likes drama making, he's very appreciative that he gets a chance to make those things. His greatest love is gaming. His greatest love is not really drama making. Drama making is his work. And I think that might be even like better than treating it as your passion. People tend to lose rationality and objective views on things when they have too much passion. He said as early as 2015, that was when this project starts to get talked about and discussed. He has been very frank. He wasn't looking at the project from a fan's point of view. He's looking at it as a project and he has been very clear from the first moment when they contacted the Japanese writer and basically saying when we adapt, we will change stuff. We have to change stuff. There will be lots of rewrites about what's originally there and it has to be like that. He said because of how frank he has been throughout the whole collaboration, it kind of actually made the collaboration process easier and it did result in a very well localized Chinese adapted version of the story. He also talked about how he picked the actors. Hu Xianxu is the person that he thought would 100% fit Shi Guang and he didn't even think about having another person to test for this role. As for Hao Fusheng, who plays Yu Liang, the director said he's very impressed by how polite this kid was when they first met and it really fits the type of character that he is going to play. The original Akila who grows up under the halo of his you know, internationally famous Go player father and gets trained from young age and is very restricted, pretty much has no life, no friends apart from Go. So he's always very controlled and very proper. And as for picking Zhang Chao playing Chu Ying, although he already knows Zhang Chao for quite a while, they took a long time to decide it's gonna finally go to him. The reason being Zhang Chao in real life is a person when he shows up at their studio, that's from the director's words, he's always super well-dressed hair perfect, coat, shining shoes, and looking super dashing. But as soon as he sits down and start to talk about stuff they, you know, like to talk about, he becomes another person. And at the end of the day, everybody is tired and he's still talking and chatting. So he almost has like a split imagery, which he thinks is really fitting for Chu Ying's role. Definitely needs to have that air of almost being a half god. But in the manga, you know, he has those character moment when he suddenly just reverts into this cute type of look in the manga world. And the director thinks Zhang Chao is able to play that as a real person. And as you watch his drama, you'll definitely agree. He plays that split of the character so well, particularly the fact that he is actually a scared of ghost. It is just ridiculous and so funny. There is also a little bit interesting thing that the leading actor Hu Xianxu, who plays Shi Guang, has wrote as a blog post after the uh, last episode. He says he has very weird connections 
with some of his characters, including his character in the Varnang Fire 2 and Kalu no Go. In the Varnang Fire 2, his name is Yuan Shi. Shi means time. And in this drama, his name is Shi Guang. Shi also means time. And Shi Guang as a word in Chinese also means time. Which is really fitting for Hikaru no Ga because it is talking about a type of time warping that resulting in those two characters' faithful meeting. And it's also even more funny that Nivarning Fire 2, although it's a completely fictional story, it is kind of based on the Nanliang, South Liang dynasty that did exist during South and North dynasties. Chu Ying comes from that period. And in the story, he has actually played Go with a emperor that did exist during that dynasty. And Hu Xianxu played a young emperor of that fictional dynasty based on the, this real dynasty. So it looks really funny and kind of fateful that the actor Hu Xianxu has this type of connection with the time, with the character, with the names. It does add a layer of mystery, right, to the fact that he ends up with those two rows. And I love both of the rows. I think this actor is slightly underrated and often he is looked at still as a kid. Maybe it's due to the fact that he has very soft features on his face and he still hasn't lost all his baby fat and stuff. But I would want to put my money down on this actor. Is within a couple of years, we're going to see him showing his true color and capability. And I have high hopes for him. I think he's also potentially very wide range actor. This video is already super long, so you can see how much I love this drama. And I can say more about it, but it's gonna make the video too long. If you haven't watched this drama, I highly recommend you watch Hikaru no Go, the Chinese adapted live action drama version. It's not the perfect version that it could be, but it's so much better than everything within this category I've seen. And I'm pretty sure you will not be disappointed. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching. Maybe you can try playing Go too. It's really fun and super hard.